How's it going guys, Vlad here and welcome to the 8th Arduino tutorial in which we're going to look at some of the ways that you can create wireless projects with the use of um, simple RF links. So as you can see here I have my um, receiver and I have a transmitter. Uh, generally you can get these anywhere from 4 to I would say $10 a piece depending on where you shop. Uh, some of them have different frequencies. Some of them have adjustable frequencies, but mine are 415 um, megahertz. So that's what, what I'm going to use today. And we're going to, first of all, take a look at how exactly they function. Uh, and basically just create a small LED circuit to see how the signal is being transmitted and received. And then we're going to look at some of the Arduino codes that can be used in conjunction uh, with these links. And I'm going to also discuss what projects you may want to use this for. So without any further delay, let's jump right into the first circuit. All right, so what I have here is a very basic setup. As you can see, my receiver is on this little breadboard and I have my transmitter over here along with a button. On the receiver end, I have an LED and a resistance. So as you can see, I'm powering the circuit with five volts. So this is just a simple DC barrel jack that goes onto my breadboard rails. Uh, notice that there's no connection between the receiver and transmitter sides, so this is all wireless. Uh, I'm only drawing power to the transmitter onto the 5 volt rail. So, uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is the antennas on these guys. First of all, the transmitter, as per the data sheet that I've got uh, off the seller, says that you should have at least 30 centimeters of a just a straight wire. And for the receiver, as you can see, I have about 10 centimeters of coiled up wire. So all I took was a pencil and then I coiled the wire and then I soldered it to the um, receiver. So, as you might have guessed, if I press the button, the LED is going to go on and off. So, you're sending obviously a high to your receiver and it goes high and then when you don't send anything it just goes low and as you as you might have noticed the LED does go on a little bit uh, when you're not sending anything so this is just noise that you can see on that channel so we're gonna take a look actually at the Arduino software and we're going to use it as um, we're gonna use its serial interface to take a look at what values we're actually getting on that receive bit uh, and how we can counter this, um, uh, these basically these false signals that we're not looking to uh, to get. So we're going to use some very crude, I would say, filtering methods to through software. So without any further delay, let's hook it up to the Arduino and see what we can find. All right. So like I mentioned, I'm very interested in seeing the voltage levels at the receiver side of this whole circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in one end of this wire into the RXD pin and the other one into one of the analog pins of the Arduino. So we're going to take a look on the computer screen what are the voltage levels that we are seeing on this uh, pin which is causing this LED to light up. So let's take a look. Okay so what I've got here is a very simple analog read program. You can refer back to the uh, original tutorials on analogs in order to figure out what's going on but basically I'm initializing a pin I am creating a float which will be used to output the voltage uh, read at that pin. I'm initializing the serial and basically outputting a bunch of stuff to the uh, serial uh, window. So let's take a look at um, what we've got. I've already uploaded this uh, to the Arduino. Let's do it again. So serial monitor. It should come up in just a second. So as you can see, this is the voltage output at the uh, receiver end. So as you can see, there's a lot of noise. Sometimes it does go up to 5, but generally it stays uh, between 0 and 3 volts. Um, so if I press the button, let's see what happens. So as you can see, it quickly goes up to 5 and then drops back down to 0 or like 3 volts. So I'm constantly pressing the button. As you can see, there's a lot of 5 scrolling up. Uh, at each press and then it goes back down uh, to 3 volts. So obviously the simplest solution would be to just create a function which would 
check for those fives and there, if there's enough of them you're going to uh, toggle a positive uh, read on your um, pin. So basically it is very very similar to what we had in the debounce um, software. So to have something to show let's create a basically an LED output and I'm just uh, I have already written this down so I'm just going to quickly grab this and most of this stuff comes from the examples in the Arduino I'm not going to retype all of this so um, in the function what I would like to do is create a and so what I'm going to use the certainty for is to actually say um, how certain I am that the button was actually pressed and the signal was actually received so if sensor value bigger than a thousand and notice this, that this thousand that's the analog read um, I had explained where this comes from before but basically you have a range from 0 to 5 volts uh, represented on your Arduino uh, in a thousand and twenty three bits so refer back to the previous tutorials if you are not familiar with that concept so certainty plus plus so basically I'm incrementing certainty if I do have a uh, high read and else it just puts it back to zero right so if certainty bigger or equal to um, four and this is uh, these sensitivity values you can adjust them so whatever works for you because you can have a different noise level in a different area and you can probably come up with something uh, even better to filter the noise this is just a basic very crude um, software patch um, so else digital right low so what this does is basically it keeps the LED on when uh, I've pressed the button and it turns it off when it's not pressed I've also reduced the delay a little bit I'm not sure why it's doing this hmm okay so delay 50 and this should be able should work okay so right now what I'm doing is I'm toggling the pin uh, 13 LED which is the LED on the Arduino so let's take a look I'm going to bring you back to the circuit and see what this actually does for us alright so what I got here is the Arduino with the software we just uploaded and as you can see if I press the button the LED in the top right corner toggles on and off um, it is so because I have not set up any kind of a retaining value so only when it actually goes high uh, it toggles so if you wanted to correct that you could simply create a boolean and then toggle it on and then whenever you press again you will toggle it off um, additionally you can obviously uh, denoise this a little bit better by the use of counters instead of the 50 millisecond delay that I currently have in my software. Uh, refer to the debouncing uh, tutorial if you would like to know more how to debounce uh, slightly better. So as you can see the noise is still uh, present here and there and you can see that LED blink once in a while. Um, obviously you can tune this a bit better for your system. Uh, one thing I really wanted to mention is uh, for one as you saw I have a transmitter and a receiver uh, module so what that means is in order to have a two-way connection between your device and Arduino and are just two devices using these modules you would have to have two pairs so uh, this only works one way um, what else I also wanted to uh, to mention that um, obviously these are not the best com communicating devices for short distances you can use Bluetooth for that or even Wi-Fi but they do uh, or they should go up to a hundred feet so if you need something 
reliable for low uh, data transmission uh, these are the way to go and uh, I'm pretty sure you can also put a serial transmission on these so I'm not uh, sure which ones you would be using but I believe the baud rate would be around 200 uh, Hertz so you would be able to transmit 2000 uh, bits per second so anyhow, anyhow hopefully you enjoyed this video and let me know if you've made any wireless devices or what you've been using this for I know this is a uh, good solution for a remote controlled uh, vehicle or uh, any other sensors or applications that you might have so let me know in the comments uh, once again uh, subscribe if you've enjoyed the video uh, let me know what else you would like me to cover post any questions you might have in the comments thank you bye